What's going on everybody? This is Cody and today I figured I would take a few minutes of everyone's time. If not, this could be pretty long. But I figured I would take my uh, chance to cover some stuff about Titanic since we have a new documentary coming out that I'm actually very interested in seeing uh, in like three, three and a half weeks now uh, as time of this recording. Um, anyway, it's covering the little-known fact about Titanic that there was a massive coal fire in one of the bunkers that could have and probably did have a good bit to deal with why this ship sank in the first place. Now, I want to go over a couple of other things in this video, and I'm just going to get all the the more common facts about the disaster. I'm turning this phone off real quick, sorry. Um... Da, 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 da. Yes, so I'm sorry about that guys. I'm going to go ahead and cover all the known Facts you probably didn't know about the uh, stuff like you see all over YouTube if you're a Titanic buff anyway For example, for example, the ship obviously didn't have enough lifeboats. Everybody knows that Some boats were launched only with about 12 people on them. So you guys are SOL for sure um, So less than half of the people survived um, the ship actually had a capacity for about 3,000 people, so it was actually light by a good about third of its uh, passenger capacity, so the disaster could have been in a multiple thousands, not just a, about 1,500 roughly. Um, so those are the first ones. Uh, more second class men died than any other group of people on the ship. Third class people actually had a better chance of survival than any man in second class about 80 percent of the second class men died versus like 10 percent in first class and like 30 40 percent in se third class which the third class people are already locked up down in the bottom of the ship so what in the hell happened with uh the second class people and uh, no one really knows um there was a novel written 14 years before Titanic set sail and sank called Futility, also known as Wreck of the Titan. It was about a ship that was about 850 some feet long, just like Titanic. It was the biggest ship in the world, just like Titanic. It sailed through the Atlantic and hit an iceberg, just like Titanic. Sank because of the iceberg, just like Titanic. It had four funnels, three uh, propellers, all that kind of good stuff. Um, most of the people on the ship did die, again, just like Titanic. We get it. The guy was a time wizard. Let's move on. Now, <clears throat> obviously the bulkheads were not sturdy enough to withstand the iceberg impact, but that is completely... N okay, nice to meet you. I'm Captain Obvious. Thank you. Um, bulkheads were no higher than uh, six to nine meters above the bottom of the ship so the bottom 30 feet roughly of the ship had bulkheads leading up but they weren't truly watertight because they didn't go all the way up if they did you wouldn't have been able to cross the ship freely you'd have to go up multiple levels to cross outside or down just a little bit so basically any part of the ship that had black paint on it you would have had to have climbed all the way up to the white part of the ship so you'd have to be up on the top decks just to cross from one side of the ship to the other which they could have done something with that they could have put bulk uh, they could have put uh, watertight doors just like you'd see on a modern day um, naval ship or a submarine just a matter of turn this and then open it and let people walk through it would have looked garish but the ship would have survived several hours longer if they did that probably other facts that would be known is that <clears throat> there was a coal fire in the bunker, like most people didn't know about that one, which we'll get to. <clears throat> um, let's see, the ship actually did not know where their real location was. They reported a location, it was multi about 15 miles off course, if you take total distance. It's like 15 miles away from where they thought they were. And we know this because the wreck was located in a different spot than they reported hitting the iceberg. The problem with that is the, car, the Californian would have been able to save the ship if the line of sight was there. They could not see the ship's distress signals. They couldn't see any of that. They saw little lights of flares, but for the longest time, everybody thought it was the... the um, 
the ship called the Samson, which is doing illegal fishing activity in between where the Californian and Titanic were. For whatever reason, they're like right in the middle, which could either suggest any kind of stuff like that. It, there's a million and one conspiracy theories out there. The real tragedy was that the Californian's wireless operator did not stay awake. Now, those are pretty much all the real common facts that most people need to know. J.P. Morgan owned both the, the White Star Line, the Carpathia Line. Pretty much all the ships that were crossing the Atlantic at that point in time had something to do with J.P. Morgan's holdings. Um, so you can go with that for sure. You know, the Mercantile Marine all those conspiracy theories but right now i'm more interested in covering the real facts of the tragedy um how it happened why it happened and multiple other things <clears throat> now <sighs> sorry now the first one i want everyone to think about is that yes the ship was very very big now, problem with ships when they were this big is that the technology was actually being outpaced that, uh, by the ambition of the people building these ships. In a fifth, in a twenty some odd year time period, ships were roughly doubling in size every five to ten years. So you start from a ship this big, five years it's now this big, ten years it's now this big, twenty this big, and then boom, we have uh, the Olympic class liners the the uh, Lusitania class, the Mauritania class, they were about this big, and they had turbine engines, all that kind of stuff going for them. White Star ships became this big, and that increased their tonnage by a considerable amount. These ships emptied weighed about 46,000 tons versus the, the smaller Cunard uh, flagships. They weighed somewhere empty about 30,000 tons somewhere in there and when they were fully laden they were closer to 40 some thousand and titanic weighed almost 60,000 tons when you had all the people all the cargo all the fuel everything it would have weighed roughly 60,000 tons somewhere between 55 and 65,000 tons <clears throat> i don't know how they would have come up with these numbers because i don't can cannot conceive a scale that can hold up a ship that heavy unless your mother happens to weigh that much but you know this this isn't call of duty so we're not making fat jokes about people's mothers so <clears throat> this being said the rudder of the ship is a little bit too small because they didn't factor in the size of the ship and how that would affect because they didn't have the technology they didn't have computer simulations to say okay this rudder is too small so we don't know how it's going to perform. The ships are actually pretty slow uh, comp comparatively to the the uh, Canard steamers. They um, were still using the tried and true reciprocating engines with a new type of turbine engine for fuel efficiency, which the turbine engine was actually quite efficient. But um, they still weren't reciprocating engines because it was far easier to find engineers on the ship for the ship rather not on the ship but they could find them much much easier otherwise i feel like i'm on um ancient aliens right now i'm just like aliens sorry guys i need a haircut <laughs> anyway so we have the engines being a little bit underpowered Still quite powerful, but for a ship this big, if it was maybe 100 feet shorter, that ship would be like setting world speed records like crazy, and they probably would have stayed until diesel engines became more popular. Now, moving on to that, the rudder, once again, was too small, in my opinion. That contributed to it, because then, you know, the ship was going a little bit faster than it should have been. So not at full speed, but I don't think it was going at absolute maximum speed they could have increased boiler pressure and the ship probably would have been about 24 knots they were going about 21 22 when they hit the iceberg so about 25 miles an hour so they're going decent you know american school speed zone and slammed into a mountain basically so nothing is going to survive hitting a mountain going 25 miles an hour i'm just going to say mountain it was 
pretty good sized iceberg. Anyway, moving along, um, the the crew was rapidly put on the ship. That most of the people on the ship had less than a week or two experience figuring out where everything was. So there was a massive misunderstanding of where everything on the ship was. Everybody was like, oh, this ship is built just like Olympic. So anybody who was on Olympic could easily figure out Titanic, which is actually wrong because Titanic never had its own plans. It was based on the Olympic plans, but there was multiple changes to Titanic, especially after the collision with the HMS Hawk. Now, a conspiracy that happened is because of the Hawk collision, which was not the first, uh, which was one of the first problems that the Olympic had. Um, took massive damage to the ship, bent the keel, d damaged a, uh, damaged multiple things, damaged the rudder, uh, damaged the propeller shafts. It it basically completely it just met, uh, it just destroyed that ship. If you think about it, they had to put a new bulkhead in to strengthen it. They had to patch it up with wood, which that sprung a leak. They had to do a lot of stuff. It threw. It threw a propeller blade twice. It did. It, it just did all sorts of a beating onto a brand new ship. Now the conspiracy would go that this ship could not be saved. You would have to cut it in half and install new parts and everything, which would have bankrupted Bel uh, Belfast shipping lane <coughs> traffic with Harlan Wolf. It would have bankrupted them. It would have bankrupted the White Star Line because they were just right there and going on bankruptcy mainly because they were in the middle of a coal strike they were in all that kind of stuff going on so there's there's uh, legal and financial troubles everywhere so conspiracy is completely feasible and i might cover that in another video just because you know i'm still waiting on this whole thing and i've been doing let's plays for fall of the titanic and honor and glory and all that stuff anyway moving along we have the, the weirdest fact, because the lifeboat drill that was supposed to take place on Titanic was canceled the day that the ship hit the iceberg. The captain, for whatever reason, decided to cancel it and did not reschedule it. That was weird. And that also fuels a conspiracy theory. I don't know why, but he did that for some reason. And it's probably just be the general fact that oh this ship is so huge that anything that could hit it would have a very hard time taking it out which obviously you know hundred and some years later and it being at the bottom of the ocean kind of proved uh that we're human we we're not god we can't make something indestructible no matter how hard we try something is going to be bigger something's going to be better and it's going to take it out but those are the things that are common knowledge. I've touched on a few things that are less common, and I'm going to stay away as much as I can from the conspiracy theory stuff because that can be safe for another time, and there's all sorts of juicy stuff there, and it deserves its own video. So what we're going to go ahead and cover is the reasons why the Titanic sank. And believe it or not, it's a little bit more complicated than poking a hole in something and watching it fill up with water and sink um predominantly that coal bunker theory now i've been following titanic stuff for the better part of 30 years now like i grew up reading every book i could on titanic i looked at watched every movie i've seen every documentary i could possibly think of youtube is my friend google is my friend amazon is my friend um even internet explorer has helped me out a couple of times and you know as a tech guy i hate internet explorer but it's actually helped and bing has helped me out and you know i just feel a distinct case of cancer every time i think the internet explorer may have helped me with something um but being that being said we're gonna go ahead and cover the the scientific reasons and the mechanical reasons titanic sank the first thing we got to consider is that everybody kept saying Oh, if they had binoculars, the the crow's nest lookouts would have been able to see a Titanic. But if you ask anybody that's ever been a lookout, they'll say the easiest way to spot ice is through the naked eye. Now, the scientific part that's coming up now is the fact that the Labrador Current runs right along the Gulf Stream. I want you to remember this. The Labrador Current is a 
wave of cold water. It's an entire current of ice cold water coming from the Arctic region of the planet. So you have this cold water coming along right next to the Gulf Stream. So you have this 60, 70 degree water on average water coming from the Gulf Coast going up like so. And then you got the Labrador Current doing this. Now the Labrador Current is allowed to go wherever the Gulf Stream allows it. So if the Gulf Stream does this, the Labrador Current can also do that. Now, that's the first part I want you to remember. 1912 was a heavy iceberg year, and it was exasperated because of the Labrador Current being able to go lower. They saw icebergs as low as the latitude of Maine and uh, Massachusetts. You could actually see icebergs coming all the way down as low as Boston in some places, which is almost unheard of. Like They might at most be seen around New Jersey or... Delaware somewhere in New England but not way down way down in like Pennsylvania and Massachusetts and everything like upper New England like that being said so Titanic was on a course to New York which is up 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 so these icebergs are going way lower than Titanic should have been so we have icebergs going much further south than they should have been where they would have started melting so these icebergs were actually a lot bigger than they would usually be when a ship encountered them. Californian actually stopped because of an ice sheet. So Titanic wasn't very far from that ice sheet. So it had one's little icebergs breaking away that it was passing. And in the morning hours after the ship sank, multiple ships came by and they said, yeah, there's icebergs everywhere. So Titanic would have probably hit one one way or the other if they weren't careful enough, which obviously they didn't have enough time to see. Now, as for the mechanical part of this, Titanic uh, was only able to detect these icebergs within 30 seconds before it hit the ship, before the iceberg actually made the collision with the Titanic. And here's again why part of the science is coming in. The night of April 14th, 1912 into the morning hours of April 15th when the disaster actually unfolded, there was a noted massive change in atmospheric and water temperatures. What all ships do, they actually take regular interval samples of the water temperatures and atmospheric conditions. They will report what temperature the air is, what temperature the water is, what the current is like. They will note the time, ship time, and I'm pretty sure they do the standard time for their time zone as well. I'm not entirely sure ship time is usually what they'll do. And then they pass it off to one of the uh, bureaus and then they'll do the number of crunching and tell you what time it actually is. So multiple logbooks reported that the water temperature had a difference of 30, 40 degrees in some places. You go from nice warm day water to ice water basically. You've got water that's about 2 Celsius or below. So we've got freezing cold water and how does that happen within like a three hour time period you go from this nice sunny day to starlit night not a cloud in the sky and ice cold water reason is the titanic just crossed into the labrador current from the gulf stream because they hit the gulf stream and then they got into that little buffer area between the two now this goes into the problem why they didn't see the iceberg so soon because their visibility should have been in multiple miles if not tens of miles away because this iceberg would have been huge if they you know if they saw it now one of the things to consider is that there was no waves there was not a breath of wind it was considered it was what was called a mill pond there was no water movement there was nothing but stars it was very dark night it, it probably would have been downright beautiful to be honest with you if it wasn't so so cold so what happened was and I actually I'm getting this information based off observations and multiple documentaries in my readings um, multiple ships in the area reported something called refraction and what refraction is is basically a cold water mirage when you see a mirage, it's because the air or the ground, typically the ground is much hotter than the air is, especially in places like deserts. That's why you'll see what looks like a like a lake in the distance, but the closer you get, 
you realize there's no light. It's still over there. It's that shimmer because it turns into a mirror, basically. It becomes a light mirror because a mirage translates into light mirror if uh, if the translation's right. I know mirage is mir something mirror. Same thing can happen with cold water and warm air. The air was warmer than the water, so it raised the horizon about maybe like that. So if you're looking from the crow's nest, you see this horizon doing this number, and that means that iceberg went invisible. You couldn't see the waves, you couldn't see the iceberg, and by that point the iceberg might have actually rolled over and saw nothing but dirt. So if that thing did that, then yeah, that iceberg would have been completely invisible until they got right on top of it. There would have been no way for them to see it, they would have been doomed. Unless, unless, I want you to consider another thing. Mechanically speaking, if the iceberg slammed head on into the iceberg, it would not have sank. You would have killed a lot of people, but the lion's share of them would have survived. The first two compartments probably would have flooded, but the ship was designed to survive any four compartments flooding in the front of the ship. It would have survived if you poked a hole in four of them. The ship had six that breached. So that leads into the other part. The testimony said that the entire 300 feet of the front of the ship was ripped wide open to the ocean. The ship would have sank in less than 20 minutes if that was the case. Research has determined that the amount of damage to the ship that actually breached the hull and flooded was about 11 or 12 square feet. When they went with the estimated weight of the ship at full weight, they said it was about 11 to 12 square feet. So that took two hours and 40 minutes exactly to sink a simulation of the ship done multiple hundreds of times. In every possible scenario, that ship hit the iceberg, even though it ran over the ice ramp, poked holes all the way through the du double bottom, poked holes through the sides, that ship was screwed in one way or the other. <clears throat> and this is where things get interesting. Now, if you remember correctly, I mentioned that the bulkheads did not go all the way up to the boat decks like they should have been. Problem is with this is that no matter what you did at that point, water was going to go over this like an overflowed bathtub or sink. So anything that happened in one compartment was going to flood into the other one and come down on top of you. Now, the boiler rooms were the ones that were getting flooded. Boiler room 5 and 6 were the first boiler rooms to flood. Boiler Room 5 flooded because the backed up water pressure from Boiler Room 6 breached a watertight bunker which lined up against the watertight compartment. For whatever stupid reason they did that, like I don't know why, but the bunker ran up against the bulkhead. So you have the entire bulkhead and then the bunker. Now this bunker was the one that took the fire. So that metal was already weakened by over a thousand degrees worth of heat the entire uh, voyage up to that point. It took them, I think it was a matter of like two or three weeks to put that fire out. I don't know why that took so long, but I know it was anywhere between one week and two to three weeks that that fire took place. So at this point, both sides of that bunker are red hot. You shouldn't have gotten anywhere near it. They should not have set sail if there was a fire that extreme going on inside the ship. And again, a conspiracy theory with that too, which leads into the original one. So sit tight for another conspiracy theory video on that too, because it's all the same conspiracy theory. So what happened with that, uh, that cold bunker is when Boiler Room 6 started flooding, ice cold water hit this already warm metal. And by this point, the fire was put out. So the fire was already under control for the most part, but there was still damage from the fire. Remember, the ship is steel-plated, but it was held together with wrought iron rivets. And these rivets weren't the strongest grade either. Even for their time, they were level 3, and I think there was a, a class 5 or um, level 5 uh, um, rivets available at the time. But 3 was not the best. <clears throat> so, the ship is already held together with substandard 
right iron rivets welding technology had not occurred yet like i think there may have been some light form of welding but it was not meant for industrial level consumption like the titanic would have needed so that water already ice cold hits this metal makes those uh, rivets absolutely brittle like you could have went up with a hammer and broke the rivets now water it weighs eight pounds per gallon at one atmosphere of pressure as soon as it hits water its pressure increases dramatically that's why at a thousand feet most things hit crush depth and will implode unless it's specifically designed to withstand it that's why most modern day naval submarines do not go lower than 1, 1,500, 2,000 feet because they can't survive it. Titanic sank in two and a half miles of water. That's over 12,000 feet, so only the most extreme machines can survive these water, uh, water depths. Bismarck's about, is uh, even deeper than Titanic, and then, you know, Mariana Trench is the deepest spot we can think of. <coughs> Challenger Deep especially. So, the reason I mention that is even at the surface, every couple feet you go down, the water pressure effectively doubles roughly per every couple of feet you go down. So, the hole in the ship that's already been punctured is already got the water pressure gushing in because it's like 15, 20 feet underwater. So, it's blasting in. So, the ship's already flooding. But as the flooding gets worse, that pressure increases and increases and increases. So it's pushing up against that bunker door. It's pushing up against the bunker. They try to hold it back. It starts pushing out the metal. The rivets start flying out. And then the thing just kind of busts open like a soda can that's been crushed too much. So at that point, the water goes, uh, the bulkhead goes blasting. Water comes blasting in, hits the other side of the watertight compartment. Could have weakened that metal too. We don't know for sure, but the fact that that fire happened, it weakened that bunker, and then it hit the boilers, like I mentioned before. And if you look up to ships like the Sultana, a boiler explosion is seriously destructive if it's under the amount of pressure that the Titanic would have had theirs under. So this flooding happens. The boilers probably exploded. I don't know if anyone's ever mentioned that, but this is just my best guess. You may have shut the dampers. You may have uh, you may have cut off their fuel supply, but they're still superheated pieces of metal. The tubes inside are still uh, superheated, and the water hitting them definitely added to the problem with the ship. Um, that generated extra steam. It could have burst the steam tanks. It could have done all sorts of damage that no one had time to worry about. And there was even testimony saying that they heard engines being ripped from their beds boilers uh, going boom uh, there's people actually noting that things are being torn from their beds as the ship sank so there's no telling if those noises they were hearing weren't uh, explosions like we don't know like it was most likely an explosion so you got all this going on you got water pouring in through uh, portholes at this point pushing the ship even further down people being trapped inside air pockets that basically imploded once they hit a certain amount of depth inside the water so people in there got imploded basically so the air pressure crushed them basically so these people had a horrible way to go out ship is still sinking and uh they delayed the order to call for help by about an hour so by that point any kind of ship could have came to their aid a lot quicker. Carpathia was about eight hours away when the ship hit the iceberg. So, you know, they called for help right away. The Carpathia would only been there about four hours later instead of like six or seven. Like multiple ships were in the area. They could have gotten there a lot quicker. They could have probably had enough time to steam over to where the Californians position was instead of just sitting there going, oh, well, we're going to, we're going to blah, 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 blah. So user error, getting new user basically is the best way to go about describing that. But ultimately the lack of lifeboats, the fact that they couldn't see the iceberg over the mirage, the mechanical problems that came from forward motion while the ship had received damage 
force water in about 20 to 30 times faster than the pumps could handle. Um, they opened up the watertight doors trying to get suction hoses in from the back of the ship and then Smith did not order them closed again because he thought it was going to keep the ship level enough to get the lifeboats done. Now, I would have gotten, the, if I was his, uh, in his position, I probably would have had him get as many people on the boat, man, woman, child, does not matter, onto the lifeboats, get them all off of the ship, get as many things you could get that can float off of the ship, throw everything in fact, I'd have go, people go downstairs with whatever they could find, baseboards, anything, and try to plug up whatever holes they could find. Hold them if you have to. Put heavy objects beside them. Anything. Slow down that flood. <clears throat> if anything, I'd actually open the front bulkheads and let water flood into multiple parts of the ship and use all the pumps in each room to try to slow that flooding down. It's a little bit... It would be very risky, but it would probably give them a little bit more time, might not. Depending on how much damage the ship really took from that iceberg impact. Because it's more complicated than just poking a hole in the side of the ship. Everybody knows that. So, anyway. Lack of action was part of the reason. Simple fact that nothing is going to survive hitting something that big, that fast, like there's no such thing as uh, surviving hitting an iceberg from your side. You took your broadside and arrogance basically killed um, 1,500 people. Everybody thought it was unsinkable and it was a tragedy and all that kind of bad stuff. Now, other facts I can tell you is that there was a lot of good that actually came from the sinking of Titanic. As bad as the loss of life was, the the studying and the the lessons learned from Titanic sinking saved probably millions of people since the accident in 1912. New rules and regulations came along after the sinking of Titanic that dictated that you had to have at minimum enough lifeboats for everyone on board, if not several more in case those boats failed. The Britannic that sank in 1914, for example, had multiple tiered davits on each side, so it could handle every single person on board and change. And less than 30 people, I think, uh, less than 100 people died on Britannic due to it being hit by a German U-boat torpedo, and it sank in less than an hour. Everyone on board got evacuated. Pretty much all of them were safe. Um... And we could add another Titanic easily. The people that died on Britannic were mostly due to the initial impact from the torpedo killing people in the lower parts of the ship. And then several people died because their boats got pulled into this, the reverse section of the propellers on the ship as it was sinking. <coughs> Which, you know, a couple, uh, hundred, couple hundred people is a lot better than almost 2,000 people, if you ask me. Um... So, we had the lifeboats for everyone on board. The women and children first roll pretty much died that day. Like, it's like, you know what? Women and children first? No, that's why the so many people died. Because, you know, you see two people on the ship, woman and child, and then you throw them on and you lower the boat. That doesn't make any sense. Twelve people doesn't make sense. So, no, I wouldn't do that either. Like, that that's just ludicrous, but that was considered common practice at the day. We learned. And then... Ships were required to have double bottoms in most cases. Like Most ships now have double bottoms. Just common sense will tell you, hey, I'd rather have more protection from my flood than less protection. People during Hurricane Katrina kind of thought the same thing. It's like, well, if we had two levees, maybe we wouldn't have flooded as bad. Or if we had better technology, we wouldn't have gotten screwed. But hindsight is twenty twenty, So... Moving on to the other things, ships' new rules and regulations meant they needed to slow down if there was bad weather. You don't go charging full speed into danger. Now we have to sit there and check all of our radars, all of our everything. Or else, you know, serious fining and jail time is in order. Other rules. 
communications officers are required by law to always be available on the ship. So if you have a wireless operator, you need to have at least two, one per each shift at minimum. So they would have like three, four, five, six wireless operators that could take shifts at a time, which means that the ship is never far away from calling for help. It's almost never far away from getting help. Um, pretty much... It's hard to count, uh, number how many things actually came from the sinking of the Titanic. Um, the Age of Innocence and such like that had died. Everybody thought that, oh, we're in a Gilded Age. We're unstoppable. We have could basically gained the power of the gods. Everybody stopped thinking that one Titanic sank. So other things that happened would be part of the conspiracy theory, and I'll save that for another time because this video is almost 40 minutes long. So basically, there's a lot of myths and legends, but there's also the cold hard facts, and most people just like thinking all these random facts, like there was a single Japanese man on the ship, and he was chastised because he didn't die on the ship, he didn't die like a man, basically. Or the richest people in the world were on the ship, or the theory that they just stood back and let everybody else die. Some people probably did that, but others didn't. You know, a lot of these people were human. Everyone's human. You don't you don't want to die. Your your instinct is to get off of something sinking at all costs. Like you can't blame people for that. Um, children died, but at the end of the day. We're human. We're going to do whatever we got to do. We're going to throw our wife and kids or our husband and our kids or our children in general onto a boat. And at the end of the day, we care about ours more. We care about yours is how humanity works. Like It's a crappy way to exist, but that's just how it is. And you can't fault these people. These people didn't want to die. These people didn't want others to die. They didn't want their ship to sink. They didn't want any of this stuff. Like, no one in their right mind wants to be in the middle of a disaster. So, you can't sit there and say these people were brave or they were cowards or anything like that because some were brave, some were cowards. A lot of them were brave, you know, like the fathers knew they weren't going to survive. A lot of these guys knew that because of women and children first, they were going to die. It just was a matter of who and when and how. Most people died due to cold. Almost everyone died due to cold. Most people didn't drown. They didn't have enough time to drown. Because you can swim for 20, 30 minutes treading water, but you would die in less than 10 in, in frigid, ice-cold water. So there's a comfort. Most people didn't drown. But at the end of the day, people had to decide who was going to live and who was going to die, which is an agonizing thing to do for sure. And um, it's not an easy choice. But that's why lifeboats now require room for every single person on board and extra just in case of stowaways and other various reasons, especially if lifeboats get broken when you're loading them or they capsize. Sorry. So yeah, guys, that's a um, basic rundown of all the things I can think of right now being half asleep. Um... <laughs> As to why Titanic sank. There's a lot of scientific reasons. There is a lot of various reasons. Um, but I was just basically covering what I thought. And all the random facts that people keep making such a big deal of. I could have made clickbait and just said. Oh by the way this fact, this fact, this fact, this fact. But I'd rather tell you guys as a human being. Instead of just reading a sheet of paper. Tell you exactly in a conversation with my viewers, with my subscribers, anybody that cares what I thought. And this is just a discussion. If you guys have a different theory than I do and you think I'm wrong, tell me why you think I'm wrong or how I'm wrong. Or just listen and provide your input. I'm not asking for anything. I am just figured I would share this with everyone since I have been doing fun things like playing uh, Fall of the Titanic and you know just going off about that. So I figured it was high time for me to actually address some stuff with people because I'll get questioned by people random because they know I'm a history buff and I know all the stuff about Titanic and they'll ask me what I think. So I figured I'd just make a video now 
to explain all that to everybody. That way I don't have to sit there and go over everything repeatedly. I could just sit there and say, hey, go watch this video and um, be done with that. Anyway, guys, if you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you dislike it, hit the dislike button and tell me why you disliked it. If you agree with me, leave a comment saying that you did. If you don't, just you know, just tell me why. I'm not going to tell you, go away. I don't like you if you don't like what I have to say. So, yeah, let's get this ball rolling, guys. Let's uh, let's add some stuff to this. And went on uh, in a couple weeks, we get a new documentary. And maybe they'll say the same stuff I'm saying. Maybe they'll sit there and say I'm full of crap and I don't know what I'm talking about. Probably the latter of those two. But, yeah, guys, be sure to subscribe. And uh, if you want to, you can... You can help support my channel by donating to PayPal or whatnot because I can't I can't get a Patreon. Um, money's a little bit tight right now. I got a baby coming. In case anybody doesn't know, I've got a <laughs> I got that over there. So yeah, I'm not asking for anything. I just I just like getting liked and subscribed, so it really helps me out. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. I am currently wa working on a How to Not Suck at Banished reboot. So. Keep an eye out for that, and I'll see you guys later, so have a good one.